Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of the Mile High Game Guys Board Gaming Podcast. I'm your host Adrian. I'm Zach. And I'm Jeff. And this is, yeah, a board gaming podcast. I guess I technically say that when I say the Mile High Game Guys Board Gaming Podcast. Yes, Correct. to differentiate us from the other Mile High Game Guys yeah. that are not board gaming podcasts. That's Correct. the, that's the um, you, oh, that's podcast. There you go. Podcasts. Podcasts. Yeah. I'm sure there's weed cast. Oh, I, I think we sure. got emails way back in the day of people having- Oh, I remember we when we, we had some contests we were doing and we tried to do like mile high. Like we had to come up with one that could refer to us, but also not- Weed. Not have weed. Uh, one's already in there. And someone early on had found us thinking that we were a weed podcast and, and then, not a board game and, yeah. podcast. Yeah, uh, very disappointing. I'm, I'm Apparently assuming. they kept listening to us, though. Yeah, they're like, they thought we were actually good. kind of interesting. Yeah. <laughs> um, Mile High Dungeon Delvers got an email from somebody who thought it was a, like, sex kind of dungeon. Oh. <laughs> oh they're delving all right. <laughs> it was like, oh, oh, oh they're dear. Falling, they're f- finding all the crevasses. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Um, so that was, that was intriguing. Uh, well, let's, uh, yeah, spelunking. Uh, let's, uh, <laughs> let's, let's jump into what we've been playing, uh, cover some board gaming content at the start of this allegedly board gaming podcast. Uh, so on Friday, uh, we streamed a board game because that's what we do on Fridays. We do the Mile High Game Guys play series. And we played Terraforming Mars Ares Expedition uh, with Megan joining uh, as our guest. Formerly Terraforming Mars the Card Game. Yeah. Yeah. Also known as Terraforming Mars the Card Game. Also known as Terraforming Mars the Ripoff Race for the Galaxy Game. Correct. Um, And it was good. Uh, I think the teach went pretty well. The 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 game only took an hour, which was yeah. great. There's um, a, there was a couple nuances that we, we missed. Yep. And then even even after a couple of the nuances that we missed and caught early, you continue to handicap yourself for yes. like three quarters of the game, which I personally appreciate because since <laughs> I got last and you got first, I appreciate you just trying to minimize that spread. I just have to say, good job, none of you. <laughs> um, to be fair. To be fair. To be, to be fair, fair. You didn't miss out on any... Oxygen or heat? Heat? Yeah. Like you're like, oh, I have this backlog of stuff. Yes. That you were able to then just dump immediately and, yes. and use and, but, it all. But I was able to dump at the last possible moment at each turn that those hit I, the cap. Correct. Yeah. You got it though. You got uh, it. Didn't miss I, you were just I, probably, I probably missed out on like twelve bucks worth of production. Yeah. So a card, which may have been worth another, yeah, you know, point yeah. or two. Uh, nothing and then, super. And dramatic. then I was squandering my actions as doing one action per mm-hmm. standard project as an action, and not just like do them all. And oh, how do many, as many as you want. How and, many actions did you have on your cards? Uh, I think three or four, I think. I so I had that one that I could use and then use again if I had played the card that yeah. would give me. Um, if I had five tokens on there, mm-hmm. a twenty-five mega credit discount that I probably missed out on four ish actions using that when I was using actions as standard projects previously. Uh, okay. yeah, so that, I probably would have gotten another twenty five discount easily gotcha. uh, on top of that. That so would have that's, that's probably... a thirty seven credit card right there. So. Yeah. So yeah. That, that's probably you know good for we'll we'll say two to four points. Yeah. You missed out on. And that's being pretty generous. Yeah. hmm So um I'll definitely say one thing. That was it was a <laughs> it's like sort of a oh no, not exactly a mess of a stream, but just like hectic. Hectic. We didn't do as good of a job as I think we could have about talking through things orderly. Either having every all of you guys just shut up and take your turns, and I talk, and we do everything simultaneously, or even yeah, I wouldn't want to go full turn by turn by turn because that would have turned that hour long stream into like a fucking four hour stream. It would yes. have been unbearable. But there almost could have been some kind of a better balance about how we did that. Mm-hmm. Um. I'm just not sure what it was, what it is. Um, but you know what really matters? You won. Then I won. Jeff yeah. Jeff got the the first podcast victory for Jeff, stream victory for Jeff in 
and undetermined recent, recent memory immemorable. in years. Yeah. <laughs> How about let's say in years in forever? <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't even remember. I know, I'm, I've I gotten some you, seconds. Yeah, yep. got some second yep. places in yeah. there. Some well, solid number twos. Yeah, this one. This one broke my. <laughs> Glad you have a solid number two, Jeff. Yeah, it's all. It's good. That's good. It's what I don't you want. want. I don't want any loose, weird number no. twos. I need solid number twos. Yeah. Uh, this broke my streak of speaking of asterisks. Get... Yes. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. Yes. Okay. All right. I appreciate that. Great. Uh, but, but I'm funny, damn it. Yeah. <laughs> but it beat my streak of either getting first or last in a game too. Yeah. Which is good. Yeah, I got, you got second. A, you got second. I did. And we definitely, it was funny to watch all because Adrian was lagging behind almost all the time because trying to do the stream and do my turns. Uh, that just seems like excuses. I was just going to sure. say just because you just take forever. I mean, no, fine. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it was definitely funny when we were like scoring all our stuff while you're doing your last little thing, and you and like you just, you just had this thing of like, oh god, I'm so far behind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, everyone had just been like, Bow! Mm. and you're like. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, I, they, like I said, it ended up. It, I ended up catching up a little bit. That last turn wasn't as brutal as I thought it was going to yeah. be. So that that was good. There were definitely one or two times where I, I remember at least a handful of cards that I couldn't take actions on. Yeah. Like someone got someone developed, and I look, and he's just like, "Shit, I don't have anything to develop with, or I don't have the money for it." All right. Or you're like, "I have to save all my money because I want to fucking do this asteroid." No kidding. I had a ton of points in cards. Mm -hmm. uh, I had 17 points out of plants and cards. I had a decent amount, especially because towards oh, the I end. I guess 12 out I, of just cards. I got a card out that was, I got a point for every four cards, and that alone got me like five, because I think I had almost 20 yeah. cards out. Wow. I had, I think I had 10 points from cards and then two from plants. So Nice. But no, a lot of my points were from my, um, uh, my corporation, which I also was... Ham hamstringing myself yeah because the production for steel i in my yes, mind i was yeah. like oh it's a unit so the first card i'm like oh i get minus two on this one and then i subtracted the production and so i should have had by my second or third card played minus eight to any any of those production cards yeah so um i do find it funny that the two people that did that wrong got first and second it just makes me wonder what Megan and I were doing wrong. Because <laughs> <laughs> it clearly had to have been clearly. Um, no, I, it, I, it seemed like who, one of you two were doing a lot of plant stuff. Was it her? Yeah, it was her. Yeah, yeah. 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 Megan was doing a lot of yeah. a lot of forests. No, yeah. So, uh, but yeah, it was it was a good stream. I got dead I, last. Overall, I like Megan. I like Megan has beat me in all three of those uh, games that I have played of that. Uh yeah, so that was the stream was Terraforming Mars Ares Expedition. I like it. it. I, I liked it more than I thought I would. I did too. Uh, I'm glad about it, but I don't think it re it definitely doesn't replace Terraforming Mars. No, uh, but, be but but all the criticisms of like, oh, it takes just as long. No, uh, no. it does not. It's no. way shorter. Now I can see because. When we were starting it, I think one reason why we were all sort of rushing a bit is because you and Megan said it took like 90 plus minutes for two players. Yeah. And that usually when you're like uh, 90 minutes for two players, that's going to be like two hours plus for like four players, you know, in a lot of games. But because this one has a static goal of you have to increase oxygen, uh, you have to get all the water, you have to increase te temperature with four people, it is going to take a lot less time. Yeah. Especially because there's none of there's no drafting or any exactly. of those other like decision points that terraforming Mars draw out longer. Um, and I don't and I don't think I've played terraforming Mars without drafting since the the statistic email has come out. I I played it with uh, some new players sometime around the statistic email, and it was one of those things where what really was like I've I've come full circle on the drafting to where like I, I still prefer to play drafting, but it's not, it's, it's not nearly as mandatory right. as I felt, especially yeah, yeah. with new players, new players. There's no reason to do drafting um, for the first time, just because it's one, it's just going, they're, they're going to try and parse like they're going to, yeah, look gonna, at, they're either going to just be like, I don't know what I want. So I'm going to choose something at random or they're going to just really try and figure it out. And then I'll drag it out a lot longer. So, yeah. and either way, it's going to hurt them more than it hurts. Exactly. Players. So yeah, no, they won't know to be like, uh, you're the Jupiter people. No Jupiter cards for you. Yeah. They're not going to know that. <laughs> so. That's why I went the Jupiter people. Yeah. You can't hurt me anymore. <laughs> <laughs>
Worked out well for you. I can go space because you can't hurt me anymore. Uh, I look forward to getting my copy in September. Yeah. When I get my uh, player board, my neoprene player mat version. Yeah. Yeah. That'll that'll be cool to see. I'm I'm interested to see the player mats. Yeah. I I paid a bunch more money for a version that's coming months down the road. There you go. And it's not even the version, it's just the, the player mats. It's just the mats. Yep. Which, I mean, I do want to try those mats out. They look nice. Yeah. But... Yeah. yeah. Uh, right on. Uh, so, for other games, um, Jeff, do you want to start this time? Sure. I feel like I always start. We'll, we'll mix it up a bit. Um, I played Ares Mission, Terraforming Mars. Yep. It's a card game. Yep. Version of Terraforming uh-huh. Mars. Uh-huh. Um, and then I played... Uh, I played Stone Age for the first time. Just a two-player game. Um, it's an older, like I think it's what two thousand five, Some, something four like that. or five, something like that. Yeah, I think it had an anniversary edition vaguely recently. Uh, it's a it's a fairly simple worker placement game. Yep. And you put your work, you get your tribe. You start with five, and then there's a spot where you can put two people, and then they, when they pull, they bring a third with them. A spot you can get agriculture up, which will make it so you can feed people easier because you get free food every round. Tools, because every other resource in the game, so there's wood, stone, clay, and gold. And when you put workers there, you get one die per uh, worker there. Okay, and then you get. When you roll those die, each resource is divisible by three, four, five, or six. So whatever your total is, you divide it by that amount. So wood is three. You divide that total by three, and that's how many resources of that type you get. Gotcha. And then you can use tools to add one, two, three, or four to as much as you want uh, based off your four tool slots. Okay. Uh, And then food as well. Yeah. Uh, And then that's just straight D6 divided by two. So, um. And then there's buildings that get you victory points. You spend resources on them. Some you spend wild resources and you whatever their value is. And their value is whatever that divisible is. So gold is divisible by six, but is also worth six. Okay. Um, and then you have civilization cards, which are worker spots. And when you buy them with one, two, three, or four wild resources, you get to do that action. And then on the bottom of it is a score multiplier for how many meeples you have, how many tools you have, how many buildings you have. However many blah, blah, blah. They're, they're your score multiplier at the end of the game. Uh, but okay. that, that's it. That's the game. And you just go until you run out of buildings or you run out of civilization cards. Uh, I did very well because it is simple enough to where it's just like get a lot of workers, be able to feed them. The more workers you have, the more stuff you can do, the more resources you can get, the more cards you can get. Get the score multiplier cards. The buildings are a good chunk of points. Like uh, you can use one to seven resources, wild resources, to buy this building, but the more expensive the resource, the more points you get out of it. So if you use a bunch of gold to build the building, then you get like 39 points. Or you can just use like a wood, a clay, and a stone on another building. Maybe that's 14 points. Okay. Uh, I had a dominating victory of <laughs> like 315 to like 151 or something like that. God damn. It was a two player game. Uh, so, you know, scores can get a little higher in sure. that. Um, and we weren't playing with the right two-player rules to start with. Uh, but it's, <laughs> okay. it's it's just like you can't go to the tool, the agriculture, and the hut for additional workers. You can only go to two of the three ah. in two-player. It can be any two of the three, but we were using all three of the three. Gotcha. I mean- that's that was the two player rule. Sure. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't like a big you, difference. I think you but... re- oh you didn't realize it until you were done. No, we realized it about halfway through, and okay. then then we started with that. Gotcha. Uh, but it wasn't like those three spots aren't like big, right? Big deals, but uh, yeah, uh, I think Stone Age is a t- totally fine entry level worker placement from two thousand eight. <laughs> from two thousand eight. Yeah. Is it two thousand eight? Yes. Okay, two thousand eight. Um. Yeah, it's 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 a game from 2008, is what it is. Um, it was totally fine. Cool. Yeah, it was neat. It was it was nice playing a different game or a game from that <laughs> era that I think is fairly well regarded. Yeah. That I just haven't ever really touched before, but I feel in the 13 years since then, there's probably I don't know 3,000 games that do it differently. Oh, <laughs> you know, certainly. And, yeah. and maybe a couple dozen that do it better. Um, but yeah, Stone Age, Stone Age is was cool. Cool. Yeah. Hey, if you have a copy of Stone Age, maybe play it. Break it out when someone new is around. 
There you go. And you do. And it's, a, <laughs> it's it's an easy. It's an entryway to learn those kind of weird mechanics, I guess. Right on. Anything else? Uh, I think that's it. Okay. For me, board game wise. Yeah, you came a bit late to game night, so that makes. Yeah, sense. I had. I was hanging out with a. Brewers and stuff. Brewers and yeast people and the former owner of Falling Rock. Yeah. yeah. How do you catch that? Yeah. Nice. Chris, Chris Black, the former owner of Falling Rock. Stole the sign. Right. He cut it out of the front and took it. Or he, <laughs> oh, he nice. took what was rightfully his, I guess. Yeah, yeah. pretty much. Well, it's him and his brother, but yeah. Cool. Yeah, he's nice. going to do something really cool. He's gonna actually going to do a road trip and try and return all of the like brewery stuff they have. Oh, cool. Because it belongs to those... Yeah, people, sure. But he's gonna try. He's gonna try and return as much as he can. Awesome. Yeah, and we'll see what he does in like September or so. Sure. All right. Uh, Zach, what about you? What'd you play? Uh, I played a couple things. Um, let's see. I played some Hanami Koji. It was okay. nice to get uh, get that out. Yeah. Uh, it's a great. I love teaching that game to somebody uh, because it's like, ah, oh, now I understand how it works. Let's play it again. Right? Yes, right. Um, sometimes they win, sometimes they don't. Yeah. No, I but think, I think I may have won on my first game. Yeah. And then I was like, okay, maybe I want to win more next time. <laughs> <laughs> um but it is it's def I mean it's still my favorite two player game of something that like the rules are super easy, but it is just uh like it has a lot of little, you know, crunchy decisions to make, which is For sure. real fun, especially because like, you know, half and I, I really I always like referring to one of the games that we played, Adrian, where uh the first two actions uh that I did were the take one card, you know, uh, secretly and just put it off to the side and then take two cards and then discard them secretly. And then you took on your first turn the draw three cards. You put three cards out. I take one. You take the other two. Yeah. And then you put two stacks of two cards and then I take one stack and you take the other stack. And I just remember you like looking at the thing and you're like, I, Zach, you know everything in this and I know nothing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's very frustrating when yeah. that happens. Yeah. Um, but I always like it. It's a lot of first games don't go the second round. Right. Because, right. So it's all about, it's all about getting, you know, getting the influence of the geishas either four out of the seven or, get 11 charm points worth. But um, what I find really interesting is when it goes past the first round, anybody that gained the favor of a geisha keeps they stay it, there. It yeah. stays there. And so it becomes a big thing about like, like now if you gain the favor of a two card geisha, then if you get one, if you have one card, then you know, then you know it's yours forever. Or if you get both those cards in your hand, you get both of the purple flutes, throw them in the trash. And you know, that one's still going to be yours. So, um, and then it's like, you know, just, oh, this person has the five. Do I want to try and take it from them? Um, yeah, I know. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot of fun. I like that game a lot. Uh, and then I played, have you ever played the, the, the scholar version? Uh, Hanami Broji? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> okay. I did. It's the same exact game. Yes. But uh, just a different theme. Male, male theme. Yeah. I, I think at the second Gen Con that we went to. No, it was the third Gen Con that we went to. They had that for sale. Okay. And my uh, my friend who came to visit for the day, I was just like, you need to buy this game because it's great. It's unfortunate that it's this flavor versus the other <laughs> one, but it's still worth it. It's the uh, same game. Same game. Just dudes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Dudes with scrolls. Hot anime dudes. Yep. Um, and then see after that I played uh The Fox in the Forest, which is a two player trick taking game. Yes. You played uh, that with Wes, right? Yes, it did. Uh that one was a lot of fun. Um I saw Broken Token came out with like a special like oh, yeah, travel yeah, case for it or yeah, something. Yeah, it's not, it's not like an insert because the game is so small. It's just a little wooden thing that just fits everything in it. Oh, cool. Uh that's yeah, it looks pretty cool. Uh so it's it's a two player trick taking game which has uh it's it's one of those types of trick taking games that have come out somewhat recently of like trick taking, but with powers. Um, and this one has three suits between uh, one and tw no one and eleven. Okay, for the cards, uh, and then it's like the one, the th every. It feels like every, I think it's every odd numbered card has a power on it, and so um, there's a card that's flipped up that is Trump. It's a Trump. You know, it's sure. it's sitting in the suit. 
but there are cards that'll like let you grab that card and then swap it with a card in your hand, which will let you know let you change Trump, especially on the trick that you're playing. Um, I'm going through a lot of emotions every time you say the word Trump. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> He's ruined it. Yes. Uh, so the nine is the witch, and that one, if you play it and there's only one nine out on the board or like you know in the trick, then it is always Trump. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's one of let's see, and then the eleven card, which is the highest, if you play it, then the other person has to either play their one, which is the lowest card, or their highest card. So like, there's ways to force people to play other cards, which is pretty cool. Sure. Uh, the I really like the one. Uh, because you play the one, and if you lose that trick, you then have to set the next trick. So uh, because the game is about getting some of the tricks, but not all of them, because you get points based off of uh, if you get seven to nine points or seven to nine tricks, you get six points. If you get uh, six of the tricks, you uh, what is it? Three, it goes like three, two, one. And then if you get zero to three tricks, you get six points as well. Mm-hmm. But if you get 10 to 13 tricks, you are uh, you get no points from that. And so um, it's, you know, you're trying to take some of them, but not all of them. And so that's that's where that one can come in and be handy to be like, I need like I need to take some tricks. And so I'm using I'm sending this one off to um, reset it towards what I got, because I know we've all played trick. I mean, there's a lot of trick taking games that like once you get caught in that cycle of never being able to 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 take the win, like in Spain yeah. and stuff like that. It's so it's nice that it has various things to help with that. Cool. Um, yeah. So that one that one was fun. Um, I played some No Thanks as as per <laughs> usual. And, like it's it's a great. We had a ton of new people at yeah. Evil again. Yes. Um. Well, just every week we've had a ton of new We people. have, yeah. Yes. Um, but the No Thanks, we played three games of it, and it was funny because uh, the first game we played, we had someone in who, who, like, it was their first time playing it, but it seemed like they were, like, at the very be- like, they just didn't get how the game was going to work. Sure. And, like, after, like, one or two tokens on, like, a 21, they went to take the card, like, at, right at the very <laughs> beginning. We're like... <laughs> Okay, you know, I mean, it, that, I don't think that's necessarily a bad move, setting up cards to try and, you know, go around. Uh, and then another set, like, she then uh, put a token on there, and it went one more round, and then she went to take the card again. And we're like, okay, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> like, you know, you don't want card. Like, we try to explain a little bit, but um, by the third game, no, yeah, the third game, she ended up winning with one of the best scores I'd seen in the game, which was... She went 30 to 35. Yes, yeah, so she had... Uh, the thir- Yes, yeah, she started with like some of the high numbers, and she basically at one point had 30, 31, and 32, and then 34 and 35. And it was getting closer and closer to the decks getting flipped over. And then on the very last card was the 33, the one that she needed to leak everything. <laughs> and she ended up having... So she had she ended a 30 there and she had 34 tokens on her too because all of those high cards nobody wanted, right? right? Yeah. Uh and so she ended up getting negative 4 points. Amazing. And it was like Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> Dominating. Yeah. So it's yeah, it, that is another game that it's like once someone plays it once they're almost always like, "Hey, let's play this again." I, mm-hmm. I get it. And it's, so it's always no, cool. I get it. to, it's always cool to see that of like once it clicks for people and then they do dramatically better. On you know on the next the next couple ones, which is always good. Uh, although occasionally you'll see people be like, "Oh, I get it," and then they just do so much worse, and you're just like, "Oh, that sucks." <laughs> right. Uh, and then the last thing, um, met up with some uh, friends to get wings yesterday, and we ended up hanging out at Dry Dock. And nice, nice, yeah. Uh, it was cool too because we went to Wing Hut, and then when Wes was driving back up, he was like, "Yeah, those wings are real good. They lived up to the hype." And it always feels nice when you're like. Hey, this stuff is real good. And then someone goes there and they're like, I agree, it was real good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, oh, what was that? Pequods was yes. that meat for me. Yeah. It was yeah. just like, this is the best pizza I've ever had. Yeah. And everyone else is just quiet the whole time. And then Zach's like, that's real fucking good pizza. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. everyone's busy just eating. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, I was like, do, are they, do they like yeah. it? Yeah. <laughs> um, that I was like, no, it's like all our all our focus was on the pizza because it's like, oh my god, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but then uh, one of the games we ended up playing was Cabo, which is you know Cabo, Cabo, an- another good drinking game yeah, for sure. Uh, and 
after like three rounds, I was doing, I, you know, I, I wasn't the one calling Cabo on any of the three rounds and I was, I was in last at that point. Yeah, hands. hands, hands, hands. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What I say? Rounds. I, I mean, rounds. Okay. And I hands, think yeah. I think of that as like games. No, no, no. But that's fine. Yeah. yeah. Uh, after after about three three or so hands, I had like fifty five points or something like that. Okay. Uh, because mm. somebody swapped me, and mm. I was I was it was like what was it like twenty eight twenty nine thirty five we'll say, and then I was at like fifty five. Okay. Uh, so I had a big league, and then that was definitely one of the things I was like, okay, well I can't play. Uh, defensive now, or any like, I got to be aggressive with this. And on the next hand, next hand, I looked at my two cards, right, and they were both. I think it was like a zero and a three, or something like that. Uh, and then I drew a card. The next card I drew was like a four. I put it down, and then I got rid of another card, and I was just like, "Well, good enough." Good, yeah, because I I was looking <laughs> I was looking at everyone, and they were they were using their abilities to peek at their cards or spy at other people's cards, and I'm like. People are in the information gathering phase. Let's just go ahead and bring it to just last round right now. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do this. Yeah. And so I called it, and I and like the card that I didn't know ended up being a one, which was ah. great. Uh, so I had I had like, like eight points, eight points, which went to zero, and everybody else had anywhere from twenty to thirty points. And so it went from round of me being last to me being in first, and wow. then everybody. Else. And then, uh, but the problem with playing risky like that. Playing on my speed with that is that it works like that sometimes, and other times it does not. Yeah, uh, and I ended up getting third. <laughs> but <laughs> uh, but no. what happens in speed Cabo? Exactly. Yeah. Uh, but that's that's basically the the games I want to talk about. Cool. Those are the interesting moments from games last week. Right on. Uh, so game night uh, was the only place I played games. So I'm gonna just fly through a couple here. Uh, so Megan and I got there kind of before everybody else. We were trying to put together a game of full terraforming Mars because Ares has just made us want to play full terraforming Mars. Uh, but that ended up happening. Uh, and so while we were sitting there, we we decided to play Dutch Blitz, uh, which for anybody not aware, uh, Dutch Blitz is a very old game, like the 1920s or something. And it's kind of like a speed kind of game where you're playing cards out real fast on the piles in the middle. Uh and it's really great with like four, five, six, seven, eight, like a bunch of people playing the game moves and like things are happening. But Two, I'm sure best at two, right? It, it, you would be wrong. Oh, okay. It's almost the exact opposite. It is certainly terrible at two. 1960. I, 1960. Uh, I would certainly. 61 years. I would recommend it's... never, ever playing that at two. Gotcha. Do like they there were multiple it times that. Uh, huh? I said, do they recommend that too? Oh, I don't know. What's our, <laughs> there, were, what's our <laughs> there were multiple times where we both would go through our whole deck and couldn't play anything. Like um, several, like we came to several like just dead stops. Where it was like, well, we can't do anything. There's not a lot of votes for okay. Dutch Blitz, but it is definitely not recommended at one or two. Gotcha. Yeah. So I, I second that. Uh, so we bailed on that really quick. We didn't even finish a game. Like we played like two hands. And we're like, no, this is, this is fucking awful. And at that point, uh, there was a game of Railroad Inc. that was getting set up, and I was like, oh, I like Railroad Inc. Let's go play that. So we jumped into that game, and uh, Megan had never played before, and I think one of the other guys that we played with never played before, and I had never played the, I think it was Green is what we decided uh, in the pre-show, is the Green Edition. Which is the, one of the, the, Green and Yellow are the newer Kickstarter versions. Yeah. And he had the big box that had, like, all four of them in there. Mm-hmm. Nice. I thought about getting that, and but then, then I didn't. But then you thought, it was like, mm, $90 for exactly. real old ink, huh? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Uh, so, that one, so the green one, the, the board, so the base, base idea of Railroad Ink is you have a little grid, I think it's a five by five, uh, might nine be a little bit nine. bigger. It might. It, is it nine, nine by nine? I think it's nine it, by nine. Yeah, I think, it's they're, a lot I think than they're five by three five. by three. Yep, I think you're right. Nine three by threes. Because the center area is three by three. Yeah. So yeah, it is. It's nine by nine. So you have a little nine by nine sheet uh, and a little dry erase marker. And each round, uh, you roll four dice for the whole table, and then everybody uses the four combinations of railroad track and roadway, and you draw them on your player board. Uh, and along the sides, there's... It's a, it's a roll and write. Yeah. Along the sides, there's some <laughs> little arrows. Uh, they're like main routes in and out of your board. And you're trying to connect a bunch of those. And the arrows also like scoring for longest road, longest railroad. Uh, and then usually some like scoring cards. And then the different colors have different things that come into them. 
And for green, its special thing was it had buildings on the board. There were three types of buildings. There's factories, there's like neighborhoods or houses, and then there's like, I don't know, municipal buildings or something like that. Um, the factories, when you made a mark on one of them, it let you double one of the dice so you could use it twice. Uh, and so that immediately made it to where instead of drawing four tracks, you could draw five. And then if you hit uh, a house with one of those uh, on that same turn or one of the municipal buildings, then up on the top row, there's like these super special draw uh, tiles that have like four. They come off of each direction. And it, over the course of the game, you can usually burn three of them and you can you only play one of each or each one of them a max of one time and you can only play any of them three times in normal railroad ink with those municipal buildings you could play one of them and it didn't count as those that limit um so you could easily on a turn play like six or seven track if oh, wow. you planned your turnout well like i had multiple rounds where i was where i was laying like six track laying a lot of track yeah okay and um and uh <laughs> yes jeff um so i did very well and i was able to connect everything into one giant network so all of my exits from the board were on one giant network they call me mario because i'd be laying the pipe that's what it was going through oh, okay yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I, I, that's what i, I, that's had what I was like, with laying pipe and yeah, you're yeah, like yeah, trying yeah, to yeah, yeah yeah there was i got I'm glad there. you found it yeah yeah, yeah. It's, it's uh lonely island lyrics ah they call me Super Mario because I'd be, be laying, laying the, the pipe. pipe. Yes, <laughs> yes. It's all coming back to me. Now, now, <laughs> now we know. Anyhow, uh, so I won very dominatingly. I had like 70, 80 points, and I think the next best was like 40 or 50. Uh, it was it was a pretty convincing one. Felt pretty good. Um, After your crushing defeat and uh, terraforming Mars Ares expedition. Indeed. Like two days, uh, well, like two a, days after. A week, a week before, yeah. <laughs> because, because once again, good job. None of you. Yep. <laughs> the winning is already going to Jeff's head. It's, I got you know. You only get one. He's got a week that it, that it, of gloating, and then yeah, yeah. Uh, so then we moved on from that. Uh, I went and played um, Kanagawa with E. Uh, it was my second time playing Kanagawa. I did real fucking bad. It just awful. Um, I barely got any paintings out there. I scored like next to no points. Hard last, hard, hard last in Kanagawa. Um, just like terraforming Mars, Ares yeah, expedition. Exactly. <laughs> um, it's a fine game. It's not my favorite. Um, but it's fine. And V loves it. Yes. And I like yeah. playing games with V. So I don't. I don't mind playing a game that I'm like kind of meh on. Uh, if somebody that I enjoy playing games with really likes the game and gets excited about it, so that was cool. Um. Then around that time, we wrangled up a bunch of new players, uh, new new attendees, uh, some of whom were new players to the next game I played, which was Betrayal at the House on the Hill, which I have not played in ages. Uh, we ended was up. It, it was just the base one, right? Yep. I mean, yeah, second no edition. Witch. But... No witch power or whatever it was. No, or the that. Scooby-Doo one or the no. D&D one. No. Nope. Okay. No, nope. just base Betrayal. Gotcha. Someone just brought Legacy. Brought our copy of yeah. Legacy just to play it. <laughs> you know, I want to get it. Get, I want to get plays yeah. on it. So yeah. you know, just, just make sure you touch it. this thing by the sides. Show it as much respect as possible. Exactly. It's very important. Um, we ended up getting uh a haunt. Um, I don't know, Aunt. You might want to turn this off because I think you're the only person who gets really upset when somebody <laughs> yes. talks about betrayal spo- spoilers. Um, I I I had heard about this haunt. Like people have talked about it before. Uh, this was my first time playing it, but basically a bunch of the investigators end up shrunk down to the size of mice, uh, including the the trader. And then the trader has two cats that are running around the house trying to eat them. And you're trying to find a little uh, toy airplane uh, and then gather all of the survivors or heroes or whatever into the uh, airplane and fly away. Rescue ranger yourself out of that situation. Exactly. Yep. And you okay. need you need half rounded up to get out for the victory and we barely did i died and megan died and the three newbies flew away into the sunset was it without six us player? it was a six okay. full six player game yep um it was good we had some really tense hunt rolls early where like people were like oh shit i've got to hit a when fucking spo- like when did the spoilers plus, end? I, I wanted to put spoilers. oh spoilers are over spoilers, spoilers are, are over. over okay uh some real tense hunt rolls early where people were like shit i don't want to reveal i don't want to reveal it was only um, 54 seconds of spoilers. Yeah, it was a real real short little little spoiler blit there. Um 
real tense haunt rolls. Uh, it was really great. It the game went so fucking long with nobody going in the basement, and I was like, I can't believe this. Like nobody's gone in the basement. Like, nobody even fell fuck? into the nobody basement. Even <laughs> fell into the basement. <laughs> And I was like, man, usually I fall into the basement on like turn one. This is crazy. Like we were getting to the point where like the stack was like 80% basement tiles. We were like having to go through a shit ton of basement tiles every time we needed to draw a ground floor or a roof. And then I fell in the coal chute. And then that's part of why I did not get out of the house because I had a very hard time getting out of the basement <laughs> before the cats came and found me. Fucking <laughs> cats. Cats love basements. So, I do. Um, that, was, that was more spoilers. but I know. know. I know. It snuck in there. Um, so it's yeah. only two minutes of spoilers. So that was so that was betrayal. Um, <laughs> it was a lot of fun. Uh, you know, everybody seemed to really like it. Uh, it was great getting to play with some new players who had never seen it before. I'm like, holy shit, this is like really thematic and like, you know, you kind of get people into it a little. Like, if you could get them to buy into it, was the... it was a very popular game. Yep, that had some poor writing. The, the first, the, it wasn't at, the balance was really bad in the original. The writing wasn't the worst. That fucking Widow's Walk expansion yeah. was so hit or miss. Some of those are great. Some of them are just garbage. Yeah. Um, I mean, I've, yeah. I think the, My, the Baldur's so- Gate is the is, most consistent. It, considered heard, really, yeah. really good. Yeah. Yeah. And well, I mean, and then Legacy, I think, is considered the best. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. No, um, the saw. The saw. Um, that's one Sierra. of my favorite. That was my favorite. Then definitely had one of the mo- most thematic endings too. Oh my really god, that was great. That. that was so good. Um. Betrayal at the House on Haunted Hill Saw Edition. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> um, so then that was getting close to the end of the night. Um, and Throw your friend into a pit of needles. Mm-hmm. Oh, I hate that scene. Yeah. Um, anyway, it was getting towards the end of the night, and so we played the last game of the night. Uh, everybody had been playing. Yeah, I'd seen like Zach playing uh, No Thanks and some of those things. And I was like, man, I want to play one of those like cool light games. And Zach had his big quiver full of like all those little card games. I was like rifling through, like which one would work, which one would work. Oh, for sale. For sale would be great. So I went and taught new players for sale. Uh, sale. The, the first round was, <laughs> God damn it. Uh, the first round was definitely a situation where like two of the five people way overbid. Uh, and it was like, oh, you're going to regret that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, for this 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 20, I want, I want nine. F- I'm going to spend nine coins. There you go. That seems like a great idea. It wasn't that bad. <laughs> you have clearly French fried uh, when you went to pizza. Yeah. yeah. And you're going to have a bad time. Yeah. Yes, you are. <laughs> yeah, it was definitely a situation where it was like, okay, so all four of these cards, they had a spread of like five or six. Oh, no. So it was like, they were like clumped. Yeah. And it was like, so yeah, the first person to pass got a steal. And yeah. then like the person who actually like bid a couple times yeah. was like, no. No. Um, no. no. I think uh, I would have bid like two and then. Yeah, I think that's about where I tapped out. And then, it, well, I mean, you, you bid two and then if people pass, you get a good one. Or if everybody bids higher than you, then you 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 keep get to keep $1. And then you get, you know, like, oh, I spent one for this. This isn't the worst. Everybody else is going to be spending a lot more. Like four, five, six. Exactly. Um, I ended up in the sale round uh, getting one of the two zeros, which was unfortunate. Oh, no. That's always very painful. And it was with like a a 16. Mm -hmm. My one thing I always like to do in that game is to always, I always try and get like the one or the two, like the real shitty ones and just try and find just like internal game of myself is like, how much can I sell this cardboard box for? <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and like, I think one or two times it's been like, it was like, you know, six, seven, like it was, it was like, you know, between six and $8,000 on there. And you're like, fuck yeah. I feel bad for this person. What is this? The Denver housing market? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there were a lot of jokes about like, Oh, you sold a cave for, you know, $14,000. All yeah. right. Like, <laughs> Got a steal on that cave. Yeah, you did. Mm-hmm. Uh, so did it was it? a lot of fun. I, I like for sale. If we'd had more time. Strong it was, foundation. It was right at the end of game night. Or Yeah, and they, they, they'd well done last call. And so it was time to go, unfortunately. But I think if I'd had more time, it would have been yet another game where people are like, okay, now I get it. Let's do it again. Yeah. So uh, I might have to bust it out. Uh, at you got, Strange. You backed the. Uh, I did, and it should be shipping soon. I'm bummed I didn't do that, but. Um, cause that'll also have the auto Rama, which yeah. is like car sales, mm-hmm. which very relevant that I backed that and then used car prices went fucking nuts. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so it's that. like, Oh, okay. Well now that'll, that'll feel as appropriate as the housing market. <laughs> I'll sell some junker car for $12,000. Mm-hmm. It'll be great. Um, or you sell your forerunner a couple of months before oh, that happens. The Sonata was worse cause uh, the Sonata is actually a newish car. Right. Um, but yeah. 
Uh, so that's what I played. It was a lot of fun. Um, and that will let us move over into banter, which I want to start with kind of a continuation of what we've been playing. So I finally got off my ass by getting on my ass here in the studio, and I uploaded a bunch of our previous streams. Oh, nice. So, so they're yep. So they're processing their their draft version of YouTube. I got to do the cards and everything and, and post them. But while I was going through and doing them, I came to a realization. So I, I don't know why I had never made this connection, but if we go way back, way, way, way back to the before times, before COVID, uh-huh. uh, we did, you guys did um, Pandemic Iberia on yep. March 6th while uh-huh. I was away skiing. And then the next week, Jeff got very, very sick. Correct. Yes. Yeah. Uh, not COVID sick, but very, very sick. I, I mean, it could have been. It I don't know. Been, yeah, but yeah. they weren't testing. Was, were you in China? No? Well, fuck off. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, and I don't know if like if your symptoms are. Anyway, whatever. Yeah. So we had Rachel uh-huh. and Ryan fill in uh-huh. for Tricarian. Yep. That was the last, the first and only time we bring Ryan on. We go over a year without doing a stream. Fucking Ryan. <laughs> Fucking Ryan. That's why he's never it, been it, back. He's it was never, even his copy, yeah. too. Yeah. So that was the last. That was the last one that we had done prior to uh, taking a long break. Was that the last one that was uploaded, or was was that was that? Oh one? no, that one had not been uploaded. <laughs> no, neither had Pandemic Iberia that you guys did on the sixth. What? Yeah. Oh, so so what you're saying is that you're like brand new episodes that we recorded over a year ago. Before, well, that at was the a beginning. good I- game of Iberia. It was. Yeah, no, Agricola Farmers on the Moor, February twenty eighth, not uploaded. Played. Uh, and did then, I even play that one? And then I probably didn't win. There was one more. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, networks! February twenty first, twenty twenty was not ever. Well, now uploaded. we can play rival networks. That's true. At this point, exactly. Yep. So yeah, so we're going to be going all the way back. So how many? How many streams is that? Uh, that so needs to be uploaded. There's one, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, or no, not that one. Uh, so seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Episodes. A dirty dozen, a or a di- baker's dozen. A baker's dozen going to be getting uploaded uh, to YouTube over the next uh, several weeks. Um, several of them are currently uploaded. I uploaded like uh, I think I, I took a gamble on like four or five in the time I had from when I got home from work today uh-huh. before we started recording, uh, and so those are uploaded and processed. Mm-hmm. Need title carded, and then I need to throw gotcha. some more on there. Yeah, which I'll probably throw more on there tonight when we get done recording. Okay. Um, I just want to let you know you're setting a dangerous precedent. Pre- a dangerous precedent. 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 Uh, that- Prescience. <laughs> so what? Really, what it was is 13 episodes. That's a quarter. So uh-huh. it's a quarter's worth of episodes in yeah. one shot. So don't expect any more. Once these get <laughs> uploaded, it's going to be another quarter before right. any more. Well, comes. Not, it's not. Do, we have to do one a week. That no, way. Well, it's time- not just that. But it's also that uh, you're le- like people will complain at you, and then you will then fix the mistake instead of just holding stubbornly. I'll just be like, "Fuck you! I'm not going to be uploading." <laughs> also, potential uh, reality of yeah. how I handle life in yeah. general. Um, yeah, and well, and then I got done with that, and I went down and I uploaded like three months worth of game nights for uh, our recurring locations. Gotcha. So there's a whole lot of game nights that are so, locked into the calendar. Okay. So hey, what, I don't know what happened today. I, I was going to say, what happened? So that was all today? That was all today. <sighs> is, don't you work on Mondays? I do. So I you, came home from work and did all of that uh, before we started gotcha. recording. And then I played video games for like an hour, which is why I was not at all ready to start the show when you guys got here at six. <laughs> but that's a whole nother issue. <laughs> That's why we started at 7.30. Yep. But yeah. So. Anyway, Adrian's done with banter. Um, what, I... Oh, well, real quick, they at, chat asked what video game. Uh, well, Megan and I, we... So for some... I don't know what made me start playing it again. Um, um, shoot. State of Decay 2 Juggernaut Edition. It's on the Xbox Game Pass. So I started playing it on the Xbox and there was, was a there was a huge new update to that game recently as well. The Juggernaut Edition. Yeah. No, before this, there's an even newer one than Juggernaut Edition that they had like a big patch recently. Uh, maybe. Yeah. Um. So I had played one, liked it a whole lot. I had played two, liked it. I don't know about a whole lot. Uh, and then I started playing Juggernaut, and I was like, oh yeah, I do remember really liking this. Megan sat and watched me play for a long time. She ended up liking it so much. She bought it on Steam so she could play on her computer uh, while I played. And so we and we're gonna start doing at some point because it's got cross play gotcha. co op, and so we're okay. gonna do some cross play co op. So nice. that's what we played. 
Um, and then I'll cycle back around the banter because I do have actual real bantery things besides my productive day. But Jeff, you seemed you wanted to take it away. No, it was mostly just to make you stop talking. Oh, um, Jesus. <laughs> Jeff, like I said, that victory going to his head. Well, you, you take up all the banter time. I'm sorry. Uh, I watched Ofer's sumo wrestling stream. I, I, I thought about doing that. I jumped on. I sub- I followed him and I said hi and he did not ever respond to me so I left and went to bed. Good. Uh, it's only for cool kids. Uh, sumo wrestling is interesting. Awesome. Um, like they do it every other month and they do it for like fifteen days and they have one bout a day. Like those two dudes go for like a couple seconds a day and it's nuts for like how much like leads up to that. Right. It, like what he was watching was like the ceremony stuff that cuts out all of the like, you know, multiple tens of minutes before the match uh-huh. each time. Uh, and then just kind of like gets to the action parts. Um, these dudes are huge. Yeah. Yeah. They're massive. Uh, like six, four, six, five, three to 400 pounds. Uh, there is, uh, an interesting guy that's Adrian sized. He's only like five <laughs> six, five nine, something like that. One of those is Adrian sized. <laughs> <laughs> um, but like, still like competitive, right? Um, he he. Uh, Ofer had also shown like a highlight reel of his like a bunch of his matches and stuff. Wait, Ofer uh, does sumo. Ofer commentates sumo oh, okay yeah. yeah 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 but he was he was that guy's match he did a, that guy's <gasps> matches oh, oh oh to be fair back of my mind i was just like did he just say that <laughs> <No, laughs> no, i was um, like how did i never know this about over so uh, this makes him cool again yeah sumo sumo is interesting there's like a whole pyramid of like tiers and and you know the better you do the higher up the tiers you go uh, Yokozuna, you know, uh-huh. like the wrestler. Yeah, that's the top tier in uh-huh. sumo is named Yokozuna. Yokozuna, the wrestler, not a sumo in any way, shape, or form. Um, <laughs> Just appropriating the shit out of that absolutely. culture. Absolutely. I mean, it was you know the early nineties. <laughs> we didn't know about there was a lot of problematic things then. in wrestling back then. All right. <laughs> yeah, there were. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> God yeah, damn. yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. The racist was the number one wrestler of all time. Uh, Oof. Hulk Hogan. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I and then I watched a couple other ones, and then he watched like the undercard sort of like matches, and they're all they're all very interesting. These big, big fucking dudes, huge. Yeah. Uh, and then like as you see them like going down like in your like modern stadium, like back hallway, aluminum, concrete sort of thing. And you see them just towering above everyone else. And I'm like, holy shit. (laughs) You don't really get the scale right (laughs) there. But when they're just kind of like walking back, it's like, wow, those guys. NFL's that way sometimes. You you see all them on the field together and like, yeah, they're the same size. And then you see that like even the small guys (laughs) in the NFL are like, God damn, you're like six fucking seven. The NBA is very, whenever I can see it, whenever I can see a basketball team walking through the airport. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. yeah, like mm, that's yeah. a basketball team, all right. <laughs> yeah. So for the for the sumo match, is it just like one? Like, is it a like a best out of contest? Or yes, is it, okay, yeah, yeah. So you want to have like you. So you would you have fifteen matches over fifteen days, and like your best record would be fifteen and zero. Uh-huh. So if you go like six and seven, or seven and six, or something like that, and how well you're doing, they they don't just like make the matches up at the beginning and you just go through it for the 15 days depending on how well you have done they will start putting those people that are tied against each other to make it like it's you someone's gonna win someone's gonna lose gotcha. and someone's gonna have a winning record versus losing record uh but there are very it's almost like a bracket kind of thing yeah uh, yeah kind, but kind an evolving bracket an evolving yeah. bracket like the better you do the more you'll you'll, you'll you'll get put up against the guys that are also doing well that's um, good yeah and then the more you kind of get in the middle, the more you're going to be against the middle people, oh. you know, from the two days I watched it. Gotcha. Sure. Uh, but yeah, it was, it, uh, Elfer knows a lot and commentates over it. And it was, it was very, very interesting. When I first jumped on the stream, I thought like he was just watching and like in chat no. with a stream where someone was like commentating. And I was like, wait a second. No, that is Ofer commentating. So yeah, that that was really cool. Yeah. Uh, Aside from the fact that he ignored me. 
Like I even when I when I followed, like I saw my name pop mm-hmm. up real big in the middle of the screen, and he was just like, "Man, fuck that guy." Yeah, that seems that's right. pretty much what we did the whole time, actually. Just uh, talk shit about me. Yeah, <laughs> great, great. <laughs> And then my my number one question, I mean, I asked a lot of questions, but my number one question was like, all right, Max Verstappen in the Red Bull car, Formula One versus the best sumo wrestler who would win. There wasn't a clear answer, but it depends. You know, it really depends on how much of a head start Max Verstappen has, (laughs) (laughs) you know, like head to head. Mm, might be close. I no, he's gonna win. It's a those, fucking F one car. <laughs> I'm just saying those cars aren't very heavy. That dude could fucking flip that. Yeah, they're car. like f- the car is like five pounds. So, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I I think he's been he's been doing live streams of that like every day of it, and I just yeah. and, and I want to I want to watch them. Uh, and then after that, we played Fall Guys. Yeah. Uh, which I reinstalled. Um, nice. How are the? It's on what season like six or seven? Now? Six, I okay. think. Um, but there is a cool new mode called Squad Mode, so you can get to a group of four. What? And like, then you're on teams. So yeah. the, the the more your team gets to like first place, second place, you get points, and then it it's cutting out the points based on points. So if like only one person of your team makes it, you're probably all four going to get cut. But it's sort of like team based. So like if someone gets first and second and the others might get last, you probably still have enough points to get gotcha. in through the next round. I'm hmm. definitely interested in that. Yeah. Because it was it was always somewhat interesting, but also always sort of sucked a little bit that I'd always get real high in a lot of those rankings. And then and you would just watch your friend play for the rest of the match. Yeah, my friends would watch me play for the rest that, of the match. That, yes, yes, yes. yes. That's <laughs> in my personal perspective is where that <laughs> sentence was coming from. Okay. All right, okay. Yeah. There's a new slime climb. Oh, called Slime Scraper. Okay, it's like PTSD oh. from the old one. Oh. Be like, oh my god, what is this nightmare that is happening? Uh, I think I finished it though. Okay. Um, I think when the old Slime Climb came through, I don't think I even finished. Oh, it. really? Oh yeah. man. Uh, but the the new mechanics are nuts. Okay. Uh, there's like these like co- light columns that you could like slow motion like jumping like, but you have like a huge super jump. That's and, cool. Yeah, it's all kind of like synth wave outrun sort of okay. like, yeah. I'm in. Yeah, it's it it's interesting. Gotcha. The Fall Guys is still good. Good to hear. Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah. Um. Oh, did you ever end up going to D Deli? No. Okay. All right. No. I, I wanted to make sure because D Deli did not happen. Okay. Because it was like, oh, that's cool, and then nothing happened, and it would have been funny if you were just like, yeah, no, I just went another day. And I was like, oh, you son of a. <laughs> I did. I did. I did not go. I I had other plans. Gotcha. Zach, um, I watched Black Widow. We yeah. all we all watched, we all watched Black, Black Widow. Widow. And uh, did you go to the big show? As I well? did. Yes, it's nice to go back to that it one. It Was very nice to be back in the big show. I forgot how far back those seats are. Yeah, right. <laughs> like I sit down and I'm like, because I ordered, I think I ordered a fried chicken sandwich or something, and I was like, oh, that's right. I don't get sandwiches here. I get something that I can just dip and then eat. Eat. Yeah. Or because you just, have to bring the whole plate. All with the plate you. all the way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's not ideal. Um, did your showing so completely unrelated to the movie? Uh-huh. So when I ordered my tickets, it was like there was a good amount of seats taken. Uh-huh. And I was like, okay, we're gonna sit like in this block of six. We can get four. I think it was a block of eight. We can mm-hmm. get the four in the middle. Uh, but there were definitely people to the left and the right. The people to the left just never fucking showed. Like it seemed like it seemed like a ton of the theater was no show. Gotcha. Oh, that's weird. No, the, so uh, the theater felt very empty compared to what it looked like when I bought the tickets. Yes. No, we had a. I would I say it was pretty like solid 75%. to sold out. Yeah. Like maybe just the front rows yeah. that weren't bought yeah. out. No. Yeah, I don't know. It was, was I had to weird. Sit next, I had to sit next to a person. You did. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, stranger danger. Yeah, exactly. You touched my arm once and I was freaked out. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, great. Yeah, I've got so, COVID. Yeah. You just spray him with hand sanitizer. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just start spraying him yeah. like a cat. Exactly. Just yeah, Lysol wipes no. and just wipe his arm. There, there, there were definitely <laughs> enough people there that when the movie started after the, like uh, the the previews and stuff like that, like a a soft but sort of rolling clap started of just people being like, "Yay, movies!" Well, it, was, it was when the Marvel Studios yes. logo was yeah. going. Okay. At the very yeah. Beginning. Yeah. yeah, they're like, "Yay, MC movie, MCU movies again." Yes, yeah. going through the trailers, Megan was like. Were there, were there just like three Marvel trailers? It's like, yes, yeah, 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 there were. Oh, they're gonna be these, fucking nuts. They've had these yeah. getting fucking ready. Yeah. <laughs> the next month or so is gonna be bonkers, mm-hmm. or not month, but the next, yeah. next year or so. Yeah, yeah. Um, how much do we want to talk about the movie? Uh, I mean, we just general forty-five seconds. Yeah, right. go. I liked it. I liked it. 
I liked it. There we go. <laughs> yeah, uh, it was not the strongest. No, it's not the strongest. I think it was. It was. I think it was weird because it was one of the only movies where it has been like not a superhero in yeah. the movie. Yes. Yeah. She is like a normal person, very highly trained, yeah. but has no sort of like, superpowers. Officially. Besides yeah. plot armor. Yes. But they all have that at one yeah, point. Yeah, exactly. Um, I can't really think of any other like non-superpowered I, thing Marvel has done as like a focus on those characters. Because yeah. there's not many of them. No, no. I mean, I would I would say like Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., like the first season of that. Yeah. But not the second and farther <laughs> on. <laughs> <laughs> See, I don't think I've ever seen past yeah. the first season of Agents of Shield. Yeah, uh, um, there were superpowered people in it. Yeah, but I feel like uh, for me, I've always kind of just uh, I even though I know like in the in the official MCU lore, she's just a human. I've always she felt- is not. I mean, it, it, in the MCU, MCU lore, lore, MCU lore, in the yeah. comic book not, lore, yeah, she is comic, not. She's doesn't not. She doesn't she have super soldier serum in her? She has anti aging serum, oh. which is the same that Nick Fury has, okay. and that's why he is always the same age. Okay, so, even though he fought in World War Two. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, so I've just always assumed she had basically like something about her, you know, super secret uh, red room training and everything that they somehow made her better than a normal person. Yeah. And so I've never felt like she was just a normal human. So when she does, you know, gets her ass kicked and doesn't die immediately from like, you know, three collapsed lungs and a <laughs> ruptured spleen. <laughs> Yeah. She gets hit that hard. No, sometimes. no. I mean, she has the three collapse songs, but luckily her fourth one is the one that's still <laughs> yeah, holds that one's on. still going. Yeah. yeah. Um, and and to be fair, like there was a big argument in Slack uh, all day today, like 160 comments about 182, like, 182. And about, I I asked, I was like, was is, it, just, is it worth me reading this, or can I just move on with my life? And everyone was just like, move, move on. on. That was just move one on. thread. <laughs> yeah. there, was, one thread. <laughs> there was an earlier spoiler thread, and then there was a lot that was not threaded. <laughs> Basically, there was a thread, and then Paul saw the movie, and then, <laughs> and <laughs> then there was, and then finally somebody bitched enough that yes. we were like okay another thread yeah um i don't disagree with a lot of the complaints that people have about the movie like there was a lot of moments in the movie where i was like okay you know kind of an eye roll or whatever i had but, a, I had I, my eyes almost rolled into my skull but i still the end, but, i didn't let none of that ruined the movie no yeah, I, I was just like okay movie. yeah whatever yeah i, I can disengage uh, my mm-hmm. brain enough uh, speaking of disengaging brain uh zach you, 20 seconds zach Okay. Oh, well, for the movie still? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I was yeah, just yeah. going to say uh, Florence Pugh, uh, who played the sister, yes. Yelena. She Amazing. was great. Yeah. yeah, from Midsummer, Very, yep. very good. Yeah, and uh, the dad, David Har- Harbour. David, uh, David Harbour. No, Harbour. Uh, Harbour. Not David Harbour. Uh, is it David Harbour? Well, something. The from, guy from Stranger, from Stranger things. things. Yeah, he was, he was very good as well. So I think good. everyone in there was good except Scarlett Johansson. She and I even liked of, her, but she did she seem like, a little checked out. Everyone else was so much better. Yeah. yeah. Uh, speaking of irrelevant movies, Tomorrow War was something I watched oh yesterday. Oh my god! Have you seen it yet, Zach? No. Okay, I have. I have. I have no interest in seeing it. So, so. Uh, Amazon Prime movie, Chris Pratt, uh, time travel action fighting alien movies. It is the dumbest Pe- plot. People of all from time. the future come to the past to get people to go fight the war in the future. Yeah, against aliens. Yeah. And and then even then are still losing horribly. Yes, they they, ins- it, they institute a worldwide draft. The yep. whole planet start just teams up, scripted, conscripting people and sending them. But so much so that they're like, all right, we're going to give you a week of training, whatever, whoever you are. And they wait and- until whatever round Chris Pratt gets taken to be like, hey, we should take veterans. <laughs> Like, I mean, well, they apparently. I mean, the story goes that they did that, and they're well, they all took all the soldiers, and, and the they're soldiers all, all die, and they're all dead. But yeah. then, like, it should have been like, okay, the soldiers are like wave one and wave two. Okay, all our soldiers are dead. Okay, all our veterans go. Okay, all our veterans are dead. Now civilians. Yeah, <laughs> which was not the case. The um, the worst thing I can say about the movie, which to be fair, I liked the movie up until the obvious ending, and then it went on for thirty more minutes. Yeah. Um, the worst thing about the movie is that it was so bad that the pitch meeting was even mediocre. I did not watch the pitch meeting. The pitch meeting, meeting is not great. Well, uh, it, it, it was a bunch of people shooting aliens and the aliens killing a lot of people and uh, and some shitty family drama. Yep. And yep. Uh, J.K. Simmons. Yes. Ripped J.K. Simmons. <laughs> Ripped heavily bearded J.K. <laughs> yeah, Simmons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, oh, I think there was something like 
conspiracy Santa or something with some line in the movie. Somebody definitely yeah. called him conspiracy Santa. Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. <laughs> it, it was it was it was enjoyable for completely unplugging your brain. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah. Maybe maybe the sequel will be better. So. Well, so and that's my problem with it. It had a point it that had, was the perfect had... ending for like cliffhanger ending for sequel, yeah. and then the movie went on for another thirty minutes. And I feel there's not really a a no. sequel able. Oh, that is not going to stop them because they're doing it. Because they're definitely going to do it again. No, yeah. Oh, it's they, happening. They, they, are, they yes. announced that it, there's yes. already going to be another oh, one. Oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah. Of course. This one was definitely wrapped up. What was it called? Tomorrow War. So it's going to be like the day after Tomorrow War? God damn it. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> Yesterday War, actually. Mm. Oh, it's a prequel. <laughs> <laughs> people in the past yeah. coming to get people in the future to go fight war in the past. Yeah. <laughs> To be fair, all of this may have happened, and that fu- that future still happened. Yeah, well, and that's like the thing like that doesn't make sense about so much of the movie. Is the time like, travel rules are very much like well, don't don't think about the time travel rules. Yeah, <laughs> that's the rules. J.K. Simmons' character's name was Slade. Yeah, Slade <laughs> Mitchell. Sure. Yeah, that's a that name. I don't sounds think they ever said, I don't think they ever said his first name. You never, they never looked at him, looked him straight in the eye and go, Slade. <laughs> no, it, it was it was Chris Chris Pratt's character's dad. Gotcha. Yeah, so there's yeah. a lot of like dad and then just like, oh, we kind of know each other. Oh, and yeah. like a lot of family drama that, I, you know what? I scrubbed through a lot of the movie. Oh, okay. So uh, I definitely skipped a lot of that drama portion sure, to sure. be like, skip, 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 alien. Go back 10, go back 10. All right. Now the scene has started. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> yeah definitely the way to watch it though because it's like a two and a half hour movie yeah it's, it's like not two, it's not short two, three, two, I, I, I enjoyed it um i uh, yeah. it is not good but i enjoyed it yes same it is not good but i enjoyed it um so yeah banter complete i think banter complete banter complete just because time constraints sure I, there's other things i could banter about i'm in a chat no, we, we shut you off already well, zach do you have you any did. other banter Wings Lo- were good. Loki. Uh, yeah wings were good wings were <sighs> very good Loki. Loki episode five was real good so good yep Loki episode six is going to be real good too. Ooh, yeah. yeah can't finale. Wait. Uh, cool. So, on to some news and Kickstarters. First up, a news. Don't like that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, remember when we talked about a fuckload of new Dune games? Well, one of those Dune games is already getting a Dune expansion. Yeah. Dune Imperium. So much Dune. Rise of X. Yeah, Rise of X. Sure. <laughs> Um, not a whole lot of information on this one. We just have the BGG page. Yep. Uh, there's going to be new three new houses, which I can only assume are going to come with two people each. So there's going to be six sure. new factions, basically faction cards. Uh, there's going to be tech cards. There's going to be new units. Uh, dreadnoughts, I think, is what they're called. Yeah. So they're like flying things. So there's going to be some new type of troop. Uh, there's going to be some sort of infiltrators or spies, espionage mechanic. Uh, some yep. people have theorized this will add bad cards into your opponent's decks. Which should be cool. Yeah. And then there will be a new epic mode, which I assume will just be like a higher victory point count because there is going to be a new speed mode, which will be a lower victory point count, seven victory points. Yeah, it says the epic game mode has high stakes challenges. So I don't know if there's like, maybe it's more points, but also they make some of the points, some of the things Bigger. worth more so that it's yeah. more swingy and epic. I don't know. You you fight harder for those big points, sure. throw more of your stuff into each round than sort of like, eh, I'm going to sit back on this one, but go hard on the next one. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it sounds, I mean, I, I really want the new houses, more leader cards just to get more variability in there. They need I mean, they had, to they had that f- green area. They had four basic ones and then four advanced ones. And the basic ones were so basic that like, why not just play with the other ones? Right. And then you really only have four factions and. Exactly. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure how much board difference that there's going to be, but I mean, in the app, They've already changed yeah. and added that like a racking scouts mode that adds in like auction phases and high council seats and stuff like that. So who knows what this will add? Who can say? Yeah. But there are some preview images uh, on there. I think yeah. it's going to come with some new cards on I saw, top I saw, of. I saw there was like a new card type 
those getting added? Those. Yeah, I think that's tech wind traps. Holtzman engine. Is it something like it looks like spending spice? You, you like spend two spice, but you get a water. When you win a conflict, get a water. So that might be just a passive benefit. Right. That you'll yeah. Have. And the other ones, like at round start, you get a green card. And then at the end game, it's worth uh, dust if you have victory least, point. Or victory point if you have at least two of the spice. That's pretty cool. Flow. Which so, are the nine like cost, that. get one victory point cards. Yeah. So uh, stuff like that. House of Vernius is one of the new houses. Your dreadnoughts have so, so four it seems strength like, instead of three. So regular troops have two, so dreadnoughts are going to have three. Gotcha. I don't. I think that might be the tech symbol sure. for the Prince Rombor sure. Vernius, and then some new. Turn three water into a point. You may take another turn immediately after this one. That's pretty great. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so it's going to be more Dune. More Dune. And I think it'll fill some spots in that game that will make it better. For sure. Yeah. At least it will be more noon. Yep. So, next up on news. Next up on news, Lord of the Rings, Journeys of Middle-Earth, Spreading War expansion. So, the second big box expansion is coming. Is that a uh, big box? Yeah. yeah well, so, yeah, because yeah, they have those small, just mini box oh, expansions. Oh, in that case, yes. Yeah, okay, yeah, right. yeah. Um, but these are considered the big box expansion because they come with more tiles and yep. classes Got and it. stuff like that. Uh, so this guy is going to explore the realms of man, where the others were Eriador, where the Shire and stuff is, kind of northwest. Yep. And then the second one was like Moria in the northeast, the forests of Legolas. Um, <laughs> that's what they called them. Mer- the forests of Legolas, that's really what they called them? No, it's not. Okay. Anyway, Merkwood? Shape, the, the Merkwood, yes, that's where okay. he came from. Uh, so this one is going to be Rohan and Gondor. Uh, you're going to get another 18 map tiles. You're going to get six new classes, which the other expansion only came with five. So this yeah. actually has one more expansion and, or yes. one more character. So, yeah, it's new heroes and new uh, classes, too. Indeed. Yes. Yeah. Six which, new heroes. With six new classes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Boromir. My boy Boromir is going to be in this game. Yep. I fucking love Boromir. He's my favorite character from Lord of the Rings. Sec- and, and only just above Faramir. I'm a big, like, men you big fan of men. <laughs> big big fan of the people of yeah. man okay. um, right. in that story. Okay. Uh, the, uh, he Beal- can take a lot of damage. Yeah, he's, Seven. he's a cool guy. Um, All I know is that his power lets you may, it lets you may do something. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they have Bjorn, which is like the great bear. Yeah, that's pretty cool. cool. looks awesome. Because yeah. he transforms into a bear. And yeah. he has like another character card that he turns into. Yeah. Um, New classes, yeah, um, it. new enemy minis, which look to be like warg riders. Uh, it looks like the Easterlings yeah, are going to be coming in, so we will. Yeah, have they got like the big war elephant and the stuff. All the fonts. Yep, uh, siege engines. So I, I doubt there's going to be any. There's not going to be any siege of Gondor in this. I don't think because this is all I, this is all pre Lord of the Rings. This is all happening. This is happening between the Hobbit and. Lord of the Rings. Gondor can get siege twice. You don't like. There's not well, just the one. Well, no, but the fall of Osgiliath. 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 Yes, but Osgiliath. It's been a long time since I've seen it written out. I couldn't quite remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> but the campaign will involve like time passing and seasons. So you will tr- be trying to like put out fires in certain areas by choosing which missions you want to go to. And if you don't go to somewhere and a season may pass, they might get stronger there and be, be harder to like fight in the like fall season versus winter. Nice. So it takes place over a year uh, okay. over in the, the realms of man. Uh, one thing that with, with their adding of like Rohan and Gondor, there's not really any, uh, or thank in okay. it at all uh, that I've seen. Huh. It might be in there, but at that point, like Sauron isn't like a bad guy yet because this true. is between true, Lord true. of the Rings. Yeah. So maybe it might have something to do with Fangorn, but there's no Ents that I see in here at all. Not but, yet. I mean, there was the Great Eagles in the other campaigns, but they weren't minis or anything like that. So maybe Ents are in it, but they just might be a, a like a a side sto- thing, a story thing sure. without like an actual figure or something like that. You know, you Although get, the Eagles played a heavy role in Bilbo, so yes, they, uh, and I mean they whereas they, the Ents didn't. Yeah, 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 yeah. But this is in the area where the Ents are, true, where the others were not. So, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to another expansion of this. It'll come with a campaign. I'm sure there'll be a DLC campaign that will be on top of that for seven dollars. Yep. Uh, but yeah, I am I am pumped for some more Jime. Same here. What's the lowest player count you guys have played at? Three. Three. 
Okay. And we're about to play it with five. Okay. Yep. Did, was three mostly what you played? Have you played four? We've played two full campaigns at three. Yep. Okay. So I'm curious what you think of the difference between three and five. Because I'm debating about whether I want to try and find someone else to join Megan and I or, or another couple or something yeah. like that. Because I got it. Yeah. Just the base set so far. I mean, if anything. Not, you, you know what it is? It's not a cheap game. It's no, not a cheap game. <laughs> Fuck no, it's not. Yeah. That's why I'm going to assume you're already calling dibs on Boromir. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, honestly, if anything, you could try it with two, and if it feels weird, you could go, you know, right. two hand it. Yeah, yeah. Um, or just find someone else to come play with us who digs Lord of the Rings and yeah. wants to play games with Megan and I. We do have friends, <laughs> believe it or not. <laughs> anyway, believe it. Anyhow. Let's do next up on news. Let's keep rolling here. Next up on news. Last up on news. Uh, Machi Koro 2 is coming out. Um, but it's it's not really Machi. It's Machi Koro 2. It's literally just Machi Koro with like, oh, we clearly need to do this to like make this game modern balanced. It It's Machi Koro where it's officially a variant that everybody's been playing since I stopped playing Machi Koro a what feels like a decade ago. Yeah. It's not because Machi Koro came out in 2014, but yes, almost a decade ago. Wow. Almost yeah. seven years. So, so there's going to be a deck of like the one to seven and then like one to one six, to six. One to seven six. to 12 and then landmarks. Yes. And then land. So there are three different rows of five cards that you can purchase. So you're mm. not always waiting for that landmark or that one landmark you want comes out and someone's just like, Ooh, landmark, boom, mine. So you're going to have a lot more options of where you want your numbers to sit. Yep. Uh, but it sounds like there's not going to be much difference beyond that rule variant. Yeah. Looking at the cards, it looked, I can't remember. It's been a long time since I moved on from Machi Koro. It might be an updated art style. Mm, no, it's, it looks the same. It looks it, pretty similar to me, but I It looks like a similar style, but I don't know. And and it also, it's just been, I don't know, shit. I, I, would, I would suspect that they would call out new art in the announcement which they did not so i think it's going to just be like rule variant and yeah maybe that might be it because i don't see any yeah the comments rip into it about like oh so now they're just doing an official version that is the variant that people have been playing for forever yeah and then apparently, like, I some mean, look, honestly, like, for like, Machi Koro Legacy was a thing, yeah. but somebody was like, it's the only game I've ever thrown away. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, like, I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, it might have just been better if they called it, like, Machi Koro Second Edition or something like that. Yeah. Because yeah. uh, looking at, like, that, a lot of the cards are the same, so. Yeah, I don't know. I don't have my set anymore, so I can't, like, I can't look and be like, did my business center look like that? But like, but like it had a business gonna, center. It had a oh yeah, yeah. App orchard, the the orchard. combo the combo in new. the top left looks new. Yep. Yeah. The launch pad I don't remember. No. Yeah. I don't know. Hard to say. Yeah, and who knows how much of like the legacy new mechanics they threw in or right. something like that makes some of the stuff in because there's been a bunch of expansions and there's been uh, oh, God, the legacy yeah. and stuff. I remember. So. No. The Tuna Boat Mafia. T- yeah, the Tuna Boats, Boat Mafia, boats and Banks. Or- I, and then the the second one that was just like, oh, no, and it ruined it. Yeah. yeah. But apparently there was a super broken combo in the Legacy. Like That's why so many people threw it out. They're like, yeah, I just you get to a point and this comes out and it's just fucking broke. Mm. So, I don't know. Uh, I'm over Machikoro. It's $30. $30 yeah. if you want to get Machikoro yep. for some reason. It's the end of news. On to Kickstarters. First on Kickstarter. We have Blood of the Northmen and its expansion. A uh, very well funded thirty thousand of its eleven thousand dollar goal. Over three hundred sixty five backers and about a week left to pledge this one, Indeed. which you can at its most popular pledge of ninety five dollars, yeah. which comes with the base game and the new expansion. Because I think it's not been easy to get outside yeah. of Kickstarter. So yeah, so this is based off an older game uh, by Carl Chudyk. Uh It's a thirty six minute game, plays one to four players. Uh, they have solo mode and team versus team mode as well as just normal fight everybody mode. Uh, and basically it is uh, a game where everyone is their own Viking clan and you are fighting all across the land uh, for points and, you know, honor or whatever. Uh, and basically the the thing that's interesting about this game, and I do actually think this is is kind of cool. So you start off, you're building the board as you go and the the tile you play 
determines what action you get to take. So um, let me scroll down down here a bit in the Kickstarter where it goes over those again so I can get them, get them correct. Don't forget the minis. Yeah, there's a ton of minis. We'll come back to all that. All right. So uh, if you play a forest, you get to do the recruit action, which lets you add new warriors on the tile. Um, the number of warriors is determined by the number of sides of the hexagon that have forest touching them. Uh, so you could add anywhere from like one to six, uh, new warriors, depending on, and I don't know, like if they actually have six sided forest hexes or not. Uh, if you play something with a lake, it lets you move troops, uh, which, uh, you can move an army, which is up to three units that are grouped. Um, and they can move as many tiles as there were lake sides on the new tile. So kind of using that same mechanic of how many sides of the feature, uh, in, indicates how strong you get to take the action. Uh, if you play something with a road, it lets you take the move road action, which is different than the move lake action. Uh, the move road lets you move um, uh, along a road any number of tiles. So you can just fly along the roads to go attack people. Uh, if you play a mountain, that lets you fight somewhere where you and an opponent are. Uh, and from that one, you actually do a little bit of like revealing tiles, uh, for each unit, discard one tile from your hand or from the draw pile. The player that discarded the most mountain sides will win the encounter. So it's kind of interesting by playing the most mountain sides, you're actually reducing the amount you can attack in the future. So kind of an, uh, an interesting little balance there about like choosing that, um, and those are the main tiles and the main actions you can do. Uh, they have a lot of other things they talk about that, like, there's villages on some tiles that grant special powers and can modify actions. Uh, that, it, you know, you can have, like, three or more player battles if you're all in the same hex when fighting goes down. Uh, there's options to draw new tiles instead of playing tiles, things like that. Um, they say to, to go to the rulebook or watch a video for that, so... I don't know, but I think that sounds really interesting that you're, like, building out the board and making this bigger space that also lets you go and do your, your fighting your, and your stuff. Your actions make the map. Yeah, which is, is a cool concept that they're, the tiles are so multi-use in yeah, that regard. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, they've got just a ton of shit uh, in this. So going way back up here, uh, the Test of Faith is the new expansion. Uh, it has a bunch of unique tiles, uh, like different seed, uh, types of cities, mead cities, silver cities, tusk cities, pelt cities, uh, 39 unique terrain tiles, uh, a bunch of miniatures, like they're adding long ships and things like that, which will probably, I guess, move across water, lakes and things to go fight. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, all kinds of different minis and, and things. That, Ooh, that will, churches to raid. Yeah, churches. <laughs> um... And I don't know, you know, because because a lot of them say like for each player, uh, for numbers, uh, and then the churches just say churches. So I'm I'm certain Terrain it is a, of... a like you get to go raid a church or something. I mean that's what Vikings did. They did a lot of that. Sure, did a lot of pillaging. Yeah. Um. So yeah, all kinds of different stuff. Uh, the base seems sets like they're full adding heroes. Yep. Or player powers based mm -hmm. on your hero stuff. Yep. Double-sided player boards, which I don't know. Like, I think those might look like the they basis are... of the land or something. I yeah, because don't... you choose your hero, and then it's like your starting tile. Yeah. Um. Well, we'll see. Whole bunch of different minis. Minis for your various tons of minis. The minis look real good. This is another one of those so games. It looks where like, it's they're like they're faction specific minis. Yes. is what they look like. That's pretty yeah. cool. Uh, another one of those games where it's like, man, I almost want to just get it for all the fucking minis and then use them for D&D. <laughs> but the game also sounds kind of cool, but I also feel like it's a game I'm not going to like. <laughs> like. All that negative interaction. Uh, yeah, they, they, they brag about the negative fighting. interaction and fighting, and I feel like yeah. I would just, you know, they're like, oh, you can have a three-plus person battle. It's like, oh, great, I could have four people just kick my teeth in. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I want. So, Jeff, we could fight, but we could also just fight Adrian instead. We could also just kill Adrian. Yeah. Yeah. And then fight after that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But then Adrian's Naturally. dead first. Yeah. <laughs> it's the way it's got to go. Yeah, because that so. way we make sure that Adrian doesn't win that fight. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> so yeah, that, uh, I don't know, I think I, it sounds kind of cool um, from a gameplay mechanic thing, but that's uh, Blood of the Northmen. Next up on Kickstarter, we have Soul Raiders. 
Very well funded, 177000 of its $59,000 goal, over 1,600 backers, about three weeks left to pledge this one, which you can, for $131. God damn. This one also has a bunch of minis in it. It does. Uh, so this is a one to four player story driven game uh, from designer Mark Andre, which if that name sounds vaguely familiar, that's that's the that's the Splendor guy. Splendor guy. Uh, so that's what he's been doing since Splendor is coming up with this ridiculous game. Uh, so Soul Raiders, uh, 30 hours plus is what they're saying. Two to four hours for the uh, per session. Uh, cooperative story driven game, like I said. And essentially, uh, you're one of uh, four base heroes. Who knows how many in all the expansions and Kickstarter add-ons. But you're one of four heroes who are like trying to defend the land from all manner of evil creatures and things that are trying to take it on. Uh, and this will also be a Kickstarter-only game. This will yes. never be seen on the shelves of a retail store. Bolded. Yeah, except for all the retail stores that just buy 10 copies yeah, and yeah, then sell yeah. them. Yeah. Uh, so basically the way the game works is you have your heroes and you have uh, uh, these like tiles that are like land that you're exploring on with minis and things. Uh, you have a deck of cards that you draw and the cards have different actions. The actions are divided into like three types, I think it is. It's like movement, magic, and combat, I believe. Um, they each have uh, a number and a symbol associated with it and then they have a power so if you play the card for the type of symbol it has on it which is one of those three like movement magic or fighting you get to do the power uh you can add any other cards and just use their number to bump it up so like you could do a one fighting card that's a two say and then like a movement card with it that's a three so your fighting strength is five but you only get to use the power from the fighting card if you're doing the fighting action so you kind of are trying to decide you know how you want to balance your cards together and combine them to do more powerful actions but that also might affect what actions you can do in the future if you're using your magic cards to boost a fight or to boost a movement action um but then like you know what is a movement action exactly because it's uh it's just an action of movement like Generated game effects can be interpreted in many ways. <laughs> yeah, they say that, and I never found anything in the rules that I was looking through that that. You know, Unless you're supposed to be like building a story of like I think what your what movement is. is actually doing. I mean, sure. technically, my hand stabbing somebody is movement, so oh, that's yeah. a movement action right there. <laughs> it's it's an arm movement. Yeah, it's action. Arm movement. Yeah, um, I move my arms when I move. Yeah. Some of the other things that this game does is so you have a communal health pool. So as anybody takes damage, everybody takes damage uh, and suffers the effects they're in. So, you that's, know, yeah. you got to you gotta make sure and work together and, you know. But that's also good because you'd be like, Adrian, you fucked us. What the hell? And it's actually messing with us versus just hurting you. You're yeah. hurting the team. <laughs> yeah. So it's all the more reason not to let me suck. Yeah. You, you just got to help me out. Um, yeah. It, uh, it seems like a lot. Uh, I don't know whether it will actually work. Uh, as far as a story-driven, ridiculous minis-based card-based game w- could, I mean, there's not and, there's not that many of them. It's so one it of those c- things where it's like the guy went from splendor to. This? I mean, he's a best-selling author. I don't know what that means. Yeah, that's what it says on the Kickstarter. Yeah, I don't know what he what he authored and sold yeah. to be best-selling, but uh, it looks nice. Like components and miniatures are and, and pretty they, great, and even though, like you said, it's Kickstarter only, they're still like a, kick, a a standard edition, and then like the fancy edition, yeah, which is like the Grimoire edition. Yeah. It's like a big book, yeah, comes with a bunch of like three minis for each character and shit the, like, like that, clones and invisible. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's definitely a lot. So I don't know. Yeah, I don't know what else he's done board game wise besides. He was too busy writing books, man. I guess he just had he had, he only had enough time for splendor. <laughs> sure, looking up what it looks. I mean, it looks it looks cool, but it it looks cool in that like yeah. That's... I wish I had a friend who got it so I could play it once, but I don't want to spend all the money on mm-hmm. it. So... Yeah, it looks it looks cool in that a lot of in the, in a lot of those story based yeah cooperative games look cool. You're like yeah, yeah it sounds cool, but I don't want to spend hundred thirty dollars. And then, and then it, well, I would never get to play it. Like there's so many story based games that I want to play that I mm-hmm. I don't get to play anyway. I still so. need to play that King Arthur Fallen Tainted game. Grail. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, 
Oh, I forgot there was a scripted action style, like icon. That's the the fourth one. Uh, There's four. Gotcha. And so, then the other ones are improv actions. Move and explore, fight, and sometimes cast powerful spells. Okay. So, uh, but yeah, that's Soul Raiders. I don't know. Go check it out. Make your own decisions. Don't the, just the, take our the word rules for it. are there. Yeah, yeah. They harp on the replay value. Cool. You know, if you want to play a game a lot. Yeah. Because that wraps up Kickstarters. So moving on to listener feedback, we have not one but dose emails. Two emails coming in for the jerf. Emails at milehighgameguys.com if you would like to send us an email. I'll Indeed. read them in chronological order. This one comes from Jeremy. Civ Games. Hi, all from way over in Australia. Just re your recent, just re your recent discussion of regarding Civ. Regarding your recent regarding, discussion. Okay. Yeah. Regarding, is that what that means? That's what that uh, means. Okay. Uh, and how they are related to the computer games. It isn't. Isn't, isn't, <laughs> it, isn't it. <laughs> <laughs> Just regarding your recent discussion of Civ games and how they're related to the computer games, isn't it? Isn't it this? Isn't it? Firstly, the original Francis Gresham civilization and then advanced civilization are cited by Sid Meier as inspiring the original computer game. Mm -hmm. They came quite a long time before it. Okay, okay. Okay. Then there have been three board games directly connect connected to the computer games. Sid Meier's Civilization, 2002 Eagle Games by Glenn Driver, the guy whose newer Civ game, Mosaic, was recently on Kickstarter. I Frank like Mosaic. Frankly, not very playable. Indeed, to the point where BGG has an entire, uh, has an entry for a complete reworking with the components called CHR. Uh, Sid Meier's Civilization, tw 2010 Fantasy Flight. Uh, this... Uh, the one with the 4x4 four four square tiles and two expansions which, in my humble opinion, tried too hard to ape the mechanisms of the computer game and fell a bit on its face, although there are lots of people who enjoy it. It had some great ideas like the Tech Pyramid and some terrible ideas like the Rock, Paper, Scissors combat. Yeah. Uh, Sid Meier Civilization A New Dawn, the one you are playing... Also, amongst the many, many games inspired by the computer game through the ages is incredibly similar, but without the board. Sid Meier is even a leader in that game. And Clash of Cultures gives you the whole expanding cities on a board with combat and government texts that feel more like the computer game than most its official board game versions. Anyway, enjoy the show and thought that the Civ remarks needed a bit of an update. Hell, a whole deep dive into the glorious world of Civ games would be fun. Cheers, Jeremy. Uh, I know a lot of people are big fans of Through the Ages. Yeah, we got a lot of fans of that. And issue. and there are a lot of another people, other people, pro, it's a Venn diagram of people who also really <laughs> like Clash of Cultures. And yeah, um, especially for trying to get that that actual like a Civ, uh, a deep Civ game that's yeah. actually good. Flow of history. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Thank you, I, I Princess would, Adrian. I would like to. Yeah, sorry about that. Uh, I <laughs> would like to play. Of a response. <laughs> I, I got a burp that's like stuck in my chest. And I was about I like it almost made me oh, burp know, into the mic. You know what I'm gonna tell you? That that's not a way to get that out. <laughs> no, that hey, was, you never know. That was a direct result of me trying to suppress it. Mm -hmm. um, I do want to play like Advanced Civ sometime uh, at like a convention. It's definitely a convention game. Uh, but it's yeah, one of those 18 to 23 hour kind of games. Yeah. Yeah. Next email. This one's from Patrick. A hey, Patrick. Uh, for the podcast, Mo, Curly, and Larry. Have you ever thought that your Slack channel is taking away from emails to the podcast? I get it. It's not like you've always had a ton of emails, but you've grown. So may expect more of them. But with people interacting on the Slack, there's a quicker dopamine hit than through emails. Maybe you could have a Slack topic devoted to podcast questions. I don't know. Mm. There's a lot uh, of activity on Slack. It would be very tempting to just answer the questions directly in Slack. It would. That'd yes. be the hard thing. It would be like, okay, we see your question, and now wait a week. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Because we already have a hard enough time getting questions for the Q&A episodes. Yeah. So uh, you're probably right to at least an extent that, you know, I, I'm sure that's why we don't hear from Boyd as much. 
He just tells us immediately. Constant stream of consciousness. And well, he does say he's going to email. And All then... the time. He's like, oh, I'm going to send you an email. And then he just tells us in Slack, well, I was going to email you about this, but then I didn't. Just what happens. Patrick continues. As for micro macro crime city, check this out. It's a link to a Radio Lab episode. Uh, not sure they were inspired by this, but possibly. Also, micro macro is a spiel a nominee. That's probably why you recall it. Uh, we may not always email you, but we are listening. That's There's creepy. It, it does. It the the emphasis on the we are listening just sounds like it's invading my personal space. Anyway. Uh, moving right along on the listener feedback train. Oh, what was the, uh, the radio lab thing about? Just, uh, so it was loosely based, uh, around a guy who was like an army special services kind of position, like tech position, uh, who started using like drone footage. Like he figured out that they could get like drones just constantly going above a city in like the middle East. And keep constant footage going, and when a roadside bomb or an IED would go off, they could zoom right in, and then they could just scroll back through all the footage and track, you know, okay, who placed the bomb, uh, and then go and, you know, find cells that way. Uh, and then he got out, and then he moved to cities, and he was like, we could do this for, like, hit and runs and all kinds of stuff like that. And it's like several major cities have, you know, near constant surveillance where, you know, enemy of the state style, that great Will Smith movie from, I don't know, 30 90, years ago. 90s, I think. <laughs> uh, but you can like just, you know. Gene Hackman? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, or any number alive? of other. I don't know. All right, I'm going to Google that real quick. Uh, <laughs> any number of other movies that are all about you know, government surveillance and everything. Uh, but yeah, that basically you can just track back through. He is 91 years old. Sorry. Yeah. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Betty White's about to turn 100, so. Don't Betty jinx Wh- it. Betty White is 99. Anyhow. Yeah, so that's what the the link is. It's a, an episode of Radio Lab. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll throw a link in the show notes. If you yeah. want to make a note to tell Zach to throw a link in the show notes, Jeff, so he remembers. Because there's no guarantee he'll listen to this part of the episode. <laughs> no. It's not in the first 10 to 15 minutes. It's so. not in the first 10 to 15 minutes, or unless it has a very specific timestamp. That's true. Last up on listener feedback, we have a comment over on YouTube, and it's not from Paulo. Once again, it has been an astoundingly long time since we heard from Paulo. It's probably been like to, two. It's probably been like two weeks. <laughs> it's been more than two weeks, but it's probably not been as long as it feels. Anyway, this one comes from the illustrious Mike Jones. Uh, he comments on episode two thirty five, a disgruntled dolphin, which, by the way, got major props for both the artwork and the title. Uh, I agree. It's great. Anyway, he comments uh, at one hour, four minutes and 10 seconds into the show. I think the word you're looking for, Zach, is bower, as in one who uses a bow. I mean, I think it's one who bows. (laughs) It's definitely uh, that would have been a better phrasing of it (laughs) Uh, for anyone who doesn't want to go listen to that specific timestamp. It's basically where we were talking about Paul almost certainly playing Lego Legolas again Mm. in Jime. Uh, the one downfall of saying it as in one who bows is that if you're reading it, you could be like a bower, someone who, who bows. bows. Hmm. And I think, yeah, I don't know. An archer, someone who arches. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> the Arabic word for archer, which I've learned because that's part of where I got the name for my new D&D character for Mile High Dungeon Delvers, oh. uh, is literally thrower of arrows is ah. like they don't they don't have just a word archer and the just, old ugh. video game rogue which is the inspiration for all roguelikes and roguelites yes um it would actually be more functional and does more damage to throw the arrows than to shoot the arrows <laughs> <laughs> just how strong you are yeah because it, it took too much time to like equip the bow pull the bow back and fire the bow and it wouldn't do as much damage and it would do the exact same amount of damage if you threw the arrow as you did shoot the arrow that seems like an oversight in design yeah yeah it was, it was <laughs> not it was an old game yeah yeah uh you that's hit him, you hit him with an arrow in one way or another it's the same amount of damage yeah. right hey yeah that's how arrows I just go run up there and stab him with an arrow <laughs> yeah there you damn go. that was um, in something recently yeah it was oh, i don't remember now. yeah i don't know um that's it for listener feedback if you would like to participate in listener feedback you can do so in a variety of ways uh you can always send us an e 
mail. Emails at milehighgamegoes.com. You can find us over on Twitter, or I tweet under at MHGameGuys. I am Zach underscore MHGG. I'm Jeff underscore MHGG. We have an Instagram account, slash or at MHGameGuys. Facebook.com slash MHGameGuys. Uh, for website information, go to punchboardmedia.com, the awesome conglomeration of content creators that we are a part of. I got to ask real quick, Adrian. I saw an email that, that I saw that our, uh, our domain is up for renewal in three days. Yeah, we're going to okay. renew it. Okay. We're renew All right. It. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Why wouldn't we renew it? <laughs> now, I, as part of my renewed effort to be productive, you know, getting episodes done, getting, you know, uh, game night scheduled, uh-huh. uh, that is on my list, especially because I've seen that. I keep seeing the, you know, oh, it's in two weeks. Oh, it's in a week. Oh, it's in three days. So I'm on top of it. I'm going to try and get us a good website gotcha. going soon. We only talked about it for about five minutes, Ryan. Uh, Black Widow. Yeah, it was under 15 minutes. We tried yeah. to keep it short. Also, yeah. I got everything I wanted to say about Black Widow said yeah. in the oh, 200 some fucking comments. And I was Slack. very much in agreement with Jeff of just like, yeah, I saw that and I was like, I'm no interest in wading in there. <laughs> moving on. Yep. Moving on. Smarter and better people than I am. Uh, anyway, so like I said, website go to punchboardmedia.com. Uh, search for MHGG or My High Game Guys, and you can see our episode posts over there, uh, along with show notes and links to all of the various uh, things we talk about. Like there will be a link to the Radio Lab episode that uh, was sent to us in listener feedback this week, links to the news and Kickstarter items we cover, all of that sort of stuff is where we throw those links. Um, also links to things like joining our Slack channel. Uh, so we... What? Uh, <clears throat> Tinder, I think is what he... Uh, but he spelled that wrong because he's old. <laughs> Way to be an old... Say tender? <laughs> yeah, tender. <laughs> True tender. I thought it was like something like tendies because no. that's like the, you know, other... Chicken tendies? Yeah. It's yeah. like a currency thing on Wall Street bets or something. Oh. Where he talks about how many tendies they're going to get with all yeah. their GameStop money. I don't know. I'm out of touch. Uh, anyway, links to things like our Slack channel where you can come participate in 180 message Black Widow discussions. Or, or, or a don't. positive, don't do it. Or don't. <laughs> yeah. That's the great thing about Slack is you yeah. can just be like, oh, that thread has 180 just some response. Scroll on by. Yep. <laughs> Uh, you can also find us over on BGG Guild number 2731, where there are weekly episode posts, uh, as well as a Q&A thread where you can go throw some questions if you have some inane questions or serious questions or whatever kind of questions, uh, because we will probably be doing a top, or not a top 10, but like a Q&A episode sometime in the next few-ish weeks. We'll see. Um, we're getting close to wanting to do one, though. So yeah. go give us questions on BGG. And last but not least, if you are not already, you should definitely go follow and or throw a uh, Amazon Prime subscription to us over on Twitch, twitch.tv slash mhgameguys, uh, so that you can see notifications and follow along when we do these recordings. And then you can see Zach with just just such such tired eyes ask, do, do we really need to go to this Kickstarter today? <laughs> <laughs> and and you'll get to see, you know, what Kickstarter it is because it clicks up on the screen just mm-hmm. in time for Zach to go, do you guys really care about this Kickstarter? Yeah. And none of that makes it into the show. So it's a good good reason to come check us out on Twitch. Then you can break our concentration by asking us about the tender for MHGG. Yep. Um, but that's pretty much everything. Uh, at this point, this show is continued to be sponsored entirely by our listeners uh, through our Patreon account. So if you want to become a patron of the show and support us financially for some reason, uh, you can do that by going to patreon.com slash milehighgameguys. And uh, there's a bunch of different pledge levels over there. Uh, that's another thing that is on my short list for re-upping and revamping uh-huh. things. Uh, that one, though, might take a little while because it's daunting to me to actually adjust anything that involves asking people for money. <laughs> Mm. I don't like to ask people for money, so uh, that wraps up the episode, though. On that awkward note, I'm just going to run away. As always, I've been your host, Adrian. I am still Zach. And I'm Yokozuna Jeff. Mm, Bye. Bye. Bye.
Punchboard Media, where we all bring something to the table. Pull up a chair at punchboardmedia.com.